do this now. Just take a right, we're gonna do a drive-by again. A hundred people are coming down the sidewalk to protest. Okay, everybody remember that we do not engage I would say that we employ radical political theater to draw attention to the absurdity of the pro-life movement. The Satanic Temple is an activist organization of self-identified Satanists, founded in 2013 as a reaction to the increasing influence of the religious right in American politics. We're so used to the theocratic agenda being pushed forward in, in bills and legislation, it's become a fact of life in, in the American culture right now. We empower women to be creative about protecting their own freedoms and access to reproductive health. In 2015, the group filed a lawsuit seeking exemption from recently introduced abortion laws in Missouri on the grounds of religious freedom. Through the suit, they are appropriating the tactics of the religious right to advance their cause. If we're asking for religious rights for all, then we need to actually understand what that means. That means religious rights for Satanists um, as well. We're in a parking lot behind the Planned Parenthood location. Um, apparently, tons of protesters just showed up. And when we were driving by, we saw so many people with signs, and there was some sort of like bishop with a ceremonial awning over him. So we're gonna head in, and it seems like people are kind of nervous that it's gonna be a little bit extreme. are extreme and do put us in a position of confrontation. Oh my God, baby! There's no way that we can come there and have a logical uh, discussion or argument. And so we don't want to give them credit for this absurdity. I think that they're doing what they're doing is for attention and I think they're trying to upset us and hurt us. The satire that I saw them using today is the same stuff that I've seen at the National Holocaust Museum that the Nazis used against the Jews. And I think that they're trying to hurt God ultimately. The meaning is a little bit lost on us. Uh, we're talking about the abstraction and fetishization of the fetal image as one that speaks and diminishes women's power and voice. Expose the violence of abortion. Oh, yeah. That's what those posts I disagree do. that abortion is violent, and I, I mean, believe that your violence. actions are violent. What happens to an abo uh, in, a, in an abortion wouldn't be done to a dog. Also, uh, people play. don't treat dogs the same way that your <laughs> yeah. protesters treat Very women outside well, clinics. You know, right. You know what, and it's a completely okay that we disagree, but you cannot force your opinions on others. And what is your relationship to like Satan as he appears in the Bible? I think the satanic figure in the Bible is one that really inspires a rebellion in mankind against a tyrannical God. But you don't like actually worship Satan. We don't believe in, you know, like a guy with a red poker down um, in hell waiting for us to, to torment us for the rest of our life. And we don't believe in supernaturalism or any element in that way. Joining us now, Lucian Graves, spokesman for the Satanic Temple. Essentially, we view uh, Satan as a symbolic embodiment of the ultimate uh, rebel against tyranny. The aesthetic of Satanism resonates with us. To us, it's genuine. It's not just something we're playing with as psychological warfare against other people. My original introduction to the idea of Satanism came very early when I was a kid. To some, it's a religion. To others, it's the practice of evil in the devil's name. It exists, and it's flourishing. 
The general culture at the time was very oppressive. Uh, these ideas that you couldn't listen to heavy metal music without getting into horrific crimes. You couldn't play Dungeons and Dragons or you were down that suicidal, homicidal spiral into Satanism. And when you're a kid, you believe these things, but more and more as time went on, it compelled me to look deeper into what the truth was behind these claims. And at the same time, I'm losing any respect for established religious organizations. And these kinds of things all converged into me really embracing the symbolism of Satanism. Some of the Satanic Temple's actions have provoked violent reactions from anti-abortion and Christian groups. Members of the temple are regularly the target of hostility and vitriol. Desecrating our Lord. People regularly have shown interest in burning down my house while I'm in it, sleeping at night. There's definitely fear towards us. And you gotten any threats? Yes. I mean, every time I do an action, I, I actually carry a, a will in my pocket. People have also said that they would show up to an event and would plan to shoot me. In fact, people have told me what kind of bullets they've recently purchased for the gun um, that they own. And so I think I'm somewhat of a hated human being. Why is reproductive rights such a good fit for the Satanic Temple? So we just have seven tenants, and they're rather humanistic and straightforward. They're the third tenant that states the body is inviolable, subject to one's own will alone, and that uh, we should defer to, to scientific fact the best we can. Those have really been the basis of our claims against uh, abortion restrictions. The Satanic Temple filed its first lawsuit in 2015 in Missouri, one of the battlegrounds for new anti-abortion restrictions. We traveled there to meet the plaintiff in the Satanic Temple suit and experience firsthand how the war over abortion is fought in one of the most divided states in the nation. That a baby is born. God is just working so hard. And the evil one is so upset that we're doing so well, which is why the devil's mad and I'm glad. Father, we would ask that abortion would end. And Father, I would like to see it start in Missouri. Republican Representative Mike Moon is one of the most hardline anti-abortion legislators in Missouri. He has introduced several controversial anti-abortion bills, including one called the All Lives Matter bill. I'm elected by about 32 to 35,000 people. They knew up front that I was pro-life. And so that's one where I drew a line in the sand uh, initially. And so that's the hill that I'd probably die on. And uh, there's no compromise. For you, would you say, personally, is this a scientific belief or is it a religious belief? I think it's both, yeah. So if the law were written with everyone acknowledging that we were created by a higher being, wouldn't it be a religiously motivated law? I'd say there is a, a substance for that. Yeah, because uh, since I believe that God created me and I do uh, attempt to follow his teachings as best I can, I, I think you're right. There, there is a foundation of, of faith in that. There could be a lot of debate as to, is this a person or is it not? You could make the same argument with uh, kittens and dogs and tadpoles and all sorts of things. When does it actually become a dog or a cat? And I would, um, I would think that most people, especially those who are pet lovers, would think it unconscionable to reach into a, a womb of a cat or a dog and rip out that forming pet. The Planned Parenthood in St. Louis is the last remaining abortion clinic in Missouri. On our way inside, we were greeted by a group of volunteers who we initially assumed were working for Planned Parenthood. Take a look over it. Please let us know if we can ever help you out. There's a bunch of free health resources in the area. Have a good day. Do people ever confuse you for Planned Parenthood volunteers? Yes. Okay. Why um, do you think that happens? I think just because of the nature of us being out here, since we are like right outside the gates, but we really just tell people like when they do confuse us with that, we say, no, we work with this different organization, but we want to let you know this XYZ information. Do you think that in Planned Parenthood, they're not told that they have other options? I can't say I don't know, but we, that's just what we try to do out here, is to let people know. But if you've never been in a Planned Parenthood, how can you know what sort of things they're offering people? I don't know. Yeah. Um, but I don't think that should deter what we want to let people know as well. Pro We'd life. love to see this place go out of business, and we pray for that. But, but the, the thing is, we're really here to help women that are confused, that think this is their only option when it's not their only option. 
and uh, in fact, it's the worst option. And society <laughs> it's, it's, will Let prove. me finish, will you, Marianne? I just wanted okay. to say one thing. Well, let, well you can say it after I finish. <laughs> the, uh, uh, because we're just here to let women know they have another option. They kill three, four hundred babies a day. And it's, it's murder. In fact, for the doctor, I don't even call call them doctors. They're worse than anything I can think of. So how has the landscape for reproductive rights changed in the past few years? There has been a never-ending onslaught in terms of chipping away at women's access to basic reproductive health care services. Of all the abortion restrictions introduced recently, Missouri's 72-hour waiting period has the biggest impact on women seeking the procedure. This law mandates that any woman who wants an abortion must go to the clinic for an in-person counseling session at which she receives an informed consent pamphlet filled with pro-life propaganda, including a section that states that life begins at conception. Afterwards, she must spend 72 hours reflecting on the information she has received before returning to the clinic to actually get the abortion procedure. The 72-hour waiting period and the informed consent material are the key elements of the Missouri abortion law the Satanic Temple opposes. We're about to meet with Mary Doe, who's the lead plaintiff in the Satanic Temple's case against the state of Missouri. She's asked us to keep her identity anonymous because she's afraid that the pro-life movement will harass or threaten her if they find out her real name. I became aware that uh, I was pregnant. And you already have a child? Yes. Well, I mean, that was a big part of the decision as well, is uh, I don't know if I'd be able to financially support them both. And as I begin to look into it, uh, I realized uh, how many roadblocks and, uh, and things were set up and just how ridiculous, you know, some of it was. You know, just one clinic in an entire state. If I mean, if you're in the far corner of the state and it's several hundred miles and you don't have a vehicle and you don't have the money to get a bus or rent a car or... It's horribly stressful. But also, I mean, to, to force them to sit and reflect for three days over a decision that is obviously it isn't made overnight. Um, I think it's just it's trying to impose guilt and shame. Thinking about this region in general, um, where you've seen closures in so many neighboring states, how does that make you feel to like kind of see this like drought of reproductive care? When you see these clinics closing and these new bills and laws and regulations being passed, you also see a rise in you know, the do-it-yourself abortions and, you know, women getting seriously hurt or killed, you know. It's scary. I mean, it's scary. If we win the lawsuit in Missouri, and when that happens, I think it will be very demoralizing to those on the Christian right who are fighting so hard to put these restrictions into place now, when they realize that the privilege they've given themselves can now be extended to other parties, and there's no legitimate way to take that away. They're going to find themselves living in the real world, and they're going to find that a very bitter pill.